Okay, I was just talking about heaven and hell. To uh, a young man, really had some pretty good questions. And we're all either going to heaven when we die, or we're going to hell when we die. Brother Jed Smock, campus preacher and creator of modern confrontational evangelism, the infamous campus preacher has sermonized openly to college campuses for over four decades, gaining a reputation for strictly held beliefs that all sins lead immediately to hell. These beliefs have led to his notorious reputation on college campuses across the United States. We sat down with Brother Jed to learn how he became the campus preacher he is today, and to discover the motives behind his preaching. I was converted uh, to Christianity in 1972, and I immediately had a burden to reach the college campuses because I'd spent all my life in academia. And so, uh, as I began to study the scriptures, I saw how people, men of God in the Bible, preached in the open air. So uh, I preached my first sermon at Indiana University on the steps of the Union in 1974. As Brother Jed preached across campuses, his reputation grew, as did his following. He has trained countless preachers in the art of confrontational evangelism on college campuses across the country, specifically targeting students because of the impact they will have later in their lives. Well, uh, college students are the future leaders of the world, future politicians, uh, bureaucrats, journalists, lawyers, doctors. People will be in positions of influence to determine the future of our country, and so they're very important people to reach. Much of the controversy surrounding Brother Jed stems from his uncompromising attitude toward his beliefs, something he feels students are not used to in this day and age. I'm not saying Christianity is just the best religion. I'm saying it's the only uh, true religion, and all other religions are false and lies and will uh, send men to hell. That doesn't go over well on a college campus because their philosophy is pluralism, multiculturalism. You can't say one philosophy or, or one religion is better than another. And so I go against what they've been learning since the first grade, really. Even as Brother Jed believes he is helping the students he preaches to, there are many that feel Brother Jed hurts those who hear his message. We spoke with Indiana University student Caleb Crane, an activist and protester who speaks out against Brother Jed when he is on the IU campus. It's something that I do to counterbalance what he does because his rhetoric and the language that he decides to use is often very inflammatory and intentionally um, hurtful just to gauge a reaction and uh, gather a crowd. So that kind of springboarded everything after losing my uh, partner to him going unopposed and my partner internalizing everything that was heard and seen and the fact that nobody was going against him. Caleb mentioned the loss of his partner due to Brother Jed's rhetoric being unchallenged and we asked him to expand on this information. The story he told was heartbreaking and further explained why he protests Brother Jed with such passion. He had dealt with Brother Jed in the fall um, and ended up taking his own life that February because nobody was actively saying positive things against this negative speech. Um, he internalized that and I came back to our single which had a bathroom uh, on it and I went in to you know get myself ready because I was going to propose to him that night because we had been together since sophomore year of high school and he was in there in the tub he had slit his wrist and he was just there and on the counter were two just five subject notebooks full of apologies and mistakes that he thought he made. I don't want somebody to have to deal with that and that's what sort of put this idea in the back of my head but I never really worked up the courage to do it. And then a couple of weeks later, another pastor uh, by the name of uh, Brother Micah Armstrong called me out 
and said something to the effect of, oh, you see the kid in the wheelchair behind you. He's been put in a wheelchair because of sins of his from a past life. It was another personal attack to where somebody could internalize that again and we could have had another similar situation. And from that point on, no matter who it is, Micah, Jed, Jed's wife, any of his family, I feel like I need to be out there because there are going to be students walking on the other side of the street that can't hear anything but what he is projecting. Even after such loss, Caleb still believes in Brother Jed's right to preach on campuses. The First Amendment, the way it's set up right now, the only speech that isn't protected is a direct threat. So no matter if something is factual or not, somebody has a right to say it. Um, there have been cases throughout history that have limited speech, but when you're in an open air area where you have the option to walk away and not stand there, there really is no limit to what can be said. Brother Jed believes he is saving the students who hear him, while others like Caleb believe Jed is only hurting the people he reaches. No matter how someone feels about him, though, whether they believe he is a disciple of God or a man simply spewing hatred, Brother Jed continues onward with his mission to reach students across the country. In the end, choosing to listen, ignore, or even protest is on those who hear his message. How would you choose? Take this old world, but give me Jesus. Take this old world, but give me Jesus. No, no turning back. back. No, no turning back. back. Somebody else want to decide to follow Jesus.